Welcome back to another Notebook Check Tech Review, and it is the Lenovo Book 10 today, the Yoga Book 10, which is a completely unique device. When I took it out of the box, I thought, wow, this is one incredibly thin laptop. And then I thought, wow, this is a quite interesting tablet. And then I thought, well, actually, it's neither of those. It's not a very good laptop, but it's not a very good tablet. What it is, if you look here, this bit here is a digitizer that works with a Lenovo pen. If I just grab that, here is a, the pen. It is active. It has pressure sensitivity, and it works across the whole of this area. So basically, you switch into pen mode, and you can use the whole of this area as a digitizer surface. It's very, very interesting, but really difficult to understand. Um, basically, the Lenovo Book 10 is available in two different versions. There's a Windows 10 version and an Android version. The Windows 10 and Android versions are both with the Intel X5 CPU, not the most powerful CPU, actually based on something that was around three years ago. In fact, there were versions of this three years ago that were more powerful than this. So this hasn't kept up. And of course, Intel are end of the line with this sort of uh, x86 type platform. So I don't know where you, uh, Lenovo will go from here. The next version of this has to be an ARM-based version without Windows 10. But having said that, this is still an interesting device. If you're into digitizing, if you're into note-taking in meetings, if you're into converting sketches into OneNote uh, documents, you have to take a look at this. Before we go into that though, let's take a look around the device. It is incredibly thin. It's a nine millimeter thin device with a 30 watt hour battery inside. It is a full Windows 10 PC and it's also a convertible as well. It's a tablet that weighs 625 grams. It's not that heavy. It's about the same weight and size as the first iPads. Now, in terms of tablets, that's a little bit behind the curve. We should be looking at a 400 gram tablet these days with more power than this. And if you are looking at a productive tablet, probably the iPad Pro, iPad Pro is going to beat this. But the iPad Pro can't do this and give you a keyboard when you need it. And it can't do all that digitizing stuff. Now, I've done a separate video just demonstrating some of the digitizer aspects of this. Let's go into that now and have a look at that. So there's a few other things to mention on this, including the ports or lack of ports. Just have a look here. Micro USB in a year that saw the USB-C standard introduced and become widespread and a micro HDMI port. Problem is you need an adapter to connect any USB devices here and you can't charge and power, uh, sorry, and have USB devices attached at the same time with a standard adapter cable. I have used a micro USB to USB adapter cable. You can put storage devices in there, no problem, and it charges through that as well. So as you saw earlier in the video, charging over an external power pack, not a problem. LTE in this as well really rounds out an incredibly mobile package and starting at uh, 500 euros and going up to 700 for the LTE Windows 10 version with 64 gigs of storage and 4 gigs of RAM certainly isn't a pack, uh, uh, certainly isn't a bad package if you're looking to have a really ultra mobile PC experience. But that keyboard is really, really tough to use. If you're going to start typing anything more than a URL or a short email, you definitely want an external keyboard. This is not a keyboard that you can use for any sort of typing, even a short blog. Social network post maybe this could be a little a nice little tool for social network uh, experts on the go, but it's not something you want to get uh, productive in terms of texting on. 
The screen, full HD, IPS, nice and bright, good accurate colors, nice contrast, really, really lovely screen from, from, from Lenovo. So take a look at the test results, you'll see really good results on the uh, screen. Engineering wise, fantastic. This uh, watch band, um, watch band hinge here is really nice and stable. It locks down with a magnet and both sides it locks down with a magnet. It really stays solid. It's a solid build. It's actually um, magnesium alloy uh, metal for the casing, of course, glass finishing. And I think this is plastic on the front here. So incredibly thin and light. Um, I've tested a few other little kind of gadgets with this which are interesting for presentations. So for example, the Action Tech uh, wireless display unit, Wi-Di America support works with it. Plus, you can actually use the USB back channel on this. So not only is it useful for roaming around doing presentations using that touch, using that pen, you can actually connect, uh, well let's quickly shoot to a video I did of this, shot to a, shoot to a video I did of this, showing how you can use it as a docking station. So you can actually charge and you can actually have a keyboard or mouse attached wirelessly. Of course, you could use a Bluetooth keyboard or mouse as well. Uh, but that's one way of doing it. In fact, this is the first time I've ever seen the Action Tech uh, device work with an external USB input device. So the USB keyboard or mouse attaches there and can be used as a completely cable-free device. If you want the best in terms of latency-free screen, then go for a micro, US, uh, micro HDMI to HDMI adapter. That works perfectly and reduces the latency on the screen to zero. In terms of performance, this isn't a hand device. And if you're looking at some of the Core M two-in-ones, this has about half the power. It is borderline, really, in terms of 2016 and certainly when we get to 2017, it's a borderline performance device. Uh, certainly iPhones, current iPhones are much more powerful than this. The iPad Pro, much more powerful than this. And this has a disk in it based on eMMC technology from four or five years ago. It is really, really slow. There are spinning hard drives out there that can write data onto the hard drive faster than this flash or SSD drive. So it's a problem because it's an old motherboard platform, an old SOC platform from Intel, needs to be updated, really, really needs to be updated to support fast, fast storage devices. In terms of battery life, Lenovo are claiming 15 hours in our tests, uh, consistent over nine hours for Wi-Fi surfing, surfing with 150 nits, so in a sensible sort of usage scenario, expect eight to 10 hours of usage. So let's just see if I can demonstrate the, the paper that comes with it, with the uh, book. <laughs> You can buy 75 sheets of this paper for 15 euros. It's a joke, Lenovo. This is paper. This is not gold leaf. Having said that, you can put normal paper in. Here's the, here's the deal. Just pop that on top of there. Press the uh, button for the keypad, for the uh, touch. And basically, you're into OneNote, and you can start taking notes. Now, I'm not using the actual pen tip here, but this is a standard uh, tip. Um, and I can actually do it on, on here. And there is a full ink tip for this, so you can actually do normal notes on it. Magnetically held on there. The only thing is this device needs a couple of rubber pads on the bottom to stop it sliding across. There's another scenario you can use as well. If you have this connected to an external monitor, you can use this as a really quite nice uh, digital uh, pad here as a digitizer, and if you're into that sort of thing with Windows, this is really going to be interesting for you because this is a unique device, and having this large an area of, as a digitizer on a laptop, on a tablet, just completely unique. 600 grams, 650 I think, makes it ultra, ultra mobile. It's bizarre that Intel have stopped producing the X5 platform or stopped development on that platform, and that a device like this comes along just as Microsoft are really pushing pen, are really integrating pen into uh, Windows 10. And it has to be said that I don't think there'll be a second generation of this device on Intel. There has to be an ARM-based device, which means Windows 10 won't be supported. So it's a strange device. It should have been out two years ago. I love it, but I hate it. It's an ultra mobile laptop and tablet that's got compromises. It's a pen, note, digitizer-focused device that is absolutely unique and is looking forward. So. 
it's up to you. If you're into pen, if you're into digitizing, you must look at this. You really must look at this. It's a very interesting device. It's light enough and small enough to carry along with your quad-core laptop anyway. So you can actually have it to the side of a normal laptop. And wouldn't it be great if you could actually project this screen onto the laptop screen so you could just use this as a digitizer. Uh, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself here. If you got anything out of this video, don't, give us, uh, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. We've got more videos coming up. And before I go, more stuff is coming in. And let's just open this. I'm not sure what this is. We've just done the Dell XPS 13 review. I have the Acer Spin 7 here that I need to do next. And this is what's coming up after that. I have no idea. Oh, no. Lenovo IdeaPad 15S is also coming up this week. And then, we'll see what this is. This is the Asus ZenBook. Looks like a 15-inch version. No, it's the 13-inch UX330OU. The full review is up on the site already for this one. Stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe, and you'll get notifications when the videos go up. If you've got questions about that Lenovo Yoga Book 10, and there are a lot of questions, put them in the YouTube comment section below and I'll try and answer them. I've got this for a few more days. I've done a lot of testing. I'm personally quite interested in this space and I'll try and answer your questions as soon as I can. Plenty more coming out. Again, don't forget to subscribe. Thumbs up. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.